everybody, where's everybody? Gather everybody around. Let's do this. Okay, um, you guys still sleeping? Having a hangover from yesterday? Yes, I've been having a a sleep hangover. These days you don't even know when it is morning, when it's afternoon, when it is night. Everything just looks the same. Um, yeah, just wanted to hang out with everyone and um, uh, tell you guys happy Easter and um, wish you the best. Hope your your Easter was um, good. You enjoyed it with your family in spite of the COVID-19, right? Um, someone accused me. I said, Chidi, why are you always doing um videos lying down on the bed <laughs> i'm like what what's what's this person's wahala why am i doing video lying down on the bed i'm like don't you know what time it is this period what what do you guys do you just stay there and um just lie down <laughs> that's what you do sleep sleep wake up sleep again wake up sleep again philo ehime how are you doing happy easter of sakwe yamu happy easter to you um honestly so a psych a psychologist told me that um and a lot of people don't understand this that you have to do things things to 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 bring you happiness and you have to learn to ignore uh, uh, crazy, stupid, and um, ignorant people. You don't let them upset you. You don't let them distract you, you know, because some people are just created like that. They don't contribute any meaningful thing to what you're doing. Um, like <laughs> when, when we do this broadcast, uh, YouTube is free. Um, Facebook is free, but these people will not, they will not do their own video. They will always come to your own video and start talking trash. So you just try to ignore them and you concentrate on the ones that are reasonable. Like all those of you who are wishing me happy Easter, I wish you back happy Easter. I am taking this time to find out how your family is doing, um, making sure that this COVID-19 it's not affecting you adversely in, in, in any way. It is affecting everybody. It's affecting me too. So we just, um, uh, at Africa Choice TV, thank you so much. Happy Easter to you. Uh, Sonita, everybody, wow. Happy Easter, happy Easter. I see all of you. Sonia, do favor. Rosaline Oguro. Uh, Simon Chino, so happy Easter. Happy Easter, my brother. Uh, happy Easter, my people. Joy Kelly, happy Easter to you. Triple J Bedford, happy Easter. Wesley, he's happy Easter, my brother. Happy Easter to you. Yeah. Sonny Edopolo, happy Easter. Ginny Moore, happy Easter to you. Ayo Nze, happy Easter to you. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter to you. I'm just waiting for our guys to, to sign in. Uh, by the way, I'm going to have a very, very explosive interview tomorrow, exactly this time. I'm going to be having an interview with, um, with a lady. This lady is, um, um, a veteran. Mm -hmm. Of the uh, of the United States Army, her name is um, is uh, Maggie Rose. I'm gonna be interviewing her tomorrow. She's um, a radio personality. She has a show that is called the Concord Show. Okay, a very interesting lady. I ran into her by accident, but I'm gonna be interviewing her tomorrow exactly this time, and it's gonna be an explosive interview you don't want to miss that interview honestly speaking because we're going to talk a little bit about uh you know us and what is going on and you know how i want to find out from her and i'm sure most of you will like to 
how the U.S. views Nigeria, and not, not just politically, but you know how the average uh, American person uh, sees the Nigeria, what they think about us, how they see us, what they think about our government and stuff like that. She's not a government spokesperson. She's an independent person, so it would be nice to hear from her. Uh, Dukbe Ogunwale says, I wish you and your family happy Easter. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Enjoy your day. Lots of fun. Yes, good afternoon, big brother. How are you doing, the family? We are doing so well. We are doing so well. I hope you too, you are doing so well. Happy Easter, MZ Nicole. Thank you so much, everybody. Yes, you see, the reason why I came to talk about this, uh, wish you guys happy Easter today. You know, every day we come, we must talk, even though we are wishing ourselves happy Easter, but to make the Easter happy, it is important that we do certain things that we are supposed to do. I know right now it's almost like a, a very terrible song when everybody is just repeating the things we're supposed to do to stay safe. Um, yes, I part, how are you? How are you? Love to your family too. But uh, we just have to keep doing that. Austin, happy Easter. Happy Easter to mm -hmm. you guys. Um, we Every time we must, as we are even wishing ourselves happy Easter, we must talk about back home. And in Nigeria, I'm telling you, um, <laughs> the state of the nation there is not palatable. Yes, uh, while we are talking about um, uh, what to do to stay safe, the greatest need they have right now is food. Is food because they sent them home, they locked them inside without adequate preparation for food. I know when this thing came up, we, we, nobody had time to prepare for it, but we in Africa, we had more time to prefer, prepare for this thing. And incidentally, uh, instead of preparing for it, uh, officials were busy trying to protect themselves and their family. So now, the hunger level back home, it was terrible, but now mm -hmm. it's even more. The hunger level is so high. And so um, I want us to also look towards people back home and wish them happy Easter because it is terrible there. In fact, um, there's a video I'm going to show later on, not today, in my main show uh, from my main studio. I'm going to show you a video of a, a guy who was robbed robbed in broad daylight. They didn't want his money. <laughs> Amoyele is, is, is good, Kasimola. I'm going to make effort to bring Amoyele Shore to talk to us. He's not going to, you know, he's not allowed to give interviews. Shore is not allowed to give interviews. It's not that he is respecting the, the government. You know, this government does not, government in Nigeria does not deserve respect. But just for the sake of his lawyers and uh, a lot of other people, their safety and everything, he decides to just go by mm -hmm. some of the things they, they, they ask him to do. But we're going to try to get him to, to talk to us on this program because he is um, mm -hmm. he has so many things that he wants to say, at least to encourage um, followers and people who, who, who care about him. So I'm going to try my best to bring him uh, on the program to talk to us. But like I was saying, back home in Nigeria, they robbed the guy, and guess what they robbed this guy of? They robbed him of foodstuff. The foodstuff that he was carrying, they robbed him of his foodstuff. It is so crazy. I posted the video on our channel. You can go there and see the video, but it is it just shows you what's going on back in Nigeria. And then, another thing I want to talk about, especially for people that were gainfully employed before this um, this COVID-19 thing. If, uh, let me, uh, today I'm gonna to be reading posts and responding to so, Dr. Chidi, this brother, how can you help us? I listened to the, to your story the other day. Um, how did it say? This is the story about how you lost your channel before and later revealed, subscribe, the same thing happened to us. Oh my God. Africa Choice TV. All right, my brother, send me send me text after this. I will tell you how to get back. Yes, once you you you're an activist, they always come after you. So please 
send me a text after this and I will show you how to get your station back. So we don't have a, a government in Nigeria. Yes, so we don't have any government. Simon Chino, so uh, my channel was disabled and now we are rebuilding subscribers and we used to have more than 7,000. Don't worry, we're going to get back. It's okay. Uh, it may be able be okay. Yes, happy Easter to you, my dear. Happy Easter. Kalista Mba. Oh, how are you, my sister Kalista? Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you and your family too. All right, guys. So one thing I really want us to think about is um, even as we enjoy Easter with our families, um, this has been a very great opportunity for people to, you know, have that time they never had with their family. You know, most people have always been busy, busy at work and they never had time with their family, but this gave them an opportunity to come back and, you know, have time to spend with their family. But <laughs> uh, as you know, after spending this time, so now what? We've spent a day, two days, a week. We all know each other. We we know how, how we smell now when we don't shower. <laughs> oh, now we've, we've learned to tolerate each other. Before, when we used to shower every 20 times in a day, and we used to go to you know, everything fancy, 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 spray before. Now, we don't even have time to do all of that. That's why they're doing all those challenges when people have to dress mm -hmm. up. I like those challenges because it gives people an opportunity to shower again. <laughs> you, you that is looking at me, you know you're not showered sometimes for two, three days. But when you do those challenges, you have to dress up. Uh, well, I know some of you didn't even shower when you put on those clothes. But what I'm trying to say is that this period has helped us to, to tolerate each other. Um, those of you who <laughs> used to complain that somebody's smelling somehow, somehow, now you smelt them over and over and over again. Now you know how they smell. You don't even notice that they're smelling anymore. <laughs> Those of you that used to complain about your wife's food and what she cooks, now you have, <laughs> you know, say, where hunger catch you, eh? every food will taste, will taste fantastic. <laughs> Ah, and for some of you, you wait till everybody's asleep. You creep, you that have been accusing people of sneaking into the fridge, you have become a fridge robber. You know, you, yes, you that is looking at me now. You know how many times you sneaked uh, to the to the refrigerator, opened it, and you ate food, and you just clean out well, well, that nobody will know. Uh, for some of us, it is. Shaving this thing every day, every time. Why? No, be small matter. Not easy. Anyways, but seriously, I want to talk about our jobs. Um, the world will not remain the same thing after this period, honestly. So as you celebrate your Easter, I want you to reflect on what life is going to be after this period. Um, they used to laugh at people like me. You know, people like me we do a thousand and one things. They used to laugh at us and they say, hey, you're a jack of all trade. Why can't you just concentrate on one thing? But I'm telling you now, situations like this um, brings out the need for you to be multi-talented, the need for you to have multiple streams of income. If you're someone who just depends on the job, the employment you have in your office, it's going to be a very hard time for you. And I, 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 I sympathize with you because so many jobs are going to be lost. And I'm not a prophet of doom, but so many people are going to see little need for a lot of our uh, professions. Take, for instance, um, shops are going to get smaller now. They're going to invest more in warehousing, in warehouse merchandising, more than in, um, in, in putting it out there. They're going to have displays more. It started happening to places like when I go to Home Depot, uh, the hardware store. They used to have their, their shelves full of things. Everything had to be displayed. But gradually, they continued to reduce their staff and they, they put everything online and they were delivering. Before you knew it, the grocery stores that you had to go in there and, and buy food, and they 
started doing delivery. Honestly, all the grocery stores before this COVID-19. And then the other stores that were not selling food items, like uh, Shoppers Drug Mart, which is a pharmacy, they started selling fresh fruit, oranges, pineapple. I was mm-hmm. surprised. Shoppers Drug Mart, they never used to sell perishable items. But why are stores going into perishable items? Because perishable items are still more difficult for you to ship to somebody's doorstep. You have to ship it from um, from the local store, okay, because they are perishable, right? But um, you can't post them in the mail. But other things that you can post in the mail, like electronics, like stationery, like jewelry, all those things, like gadgets, you know, those things can be put in the mail and they can be shipped. People are going to become more, people who didn't, like, people are going to become more dependent on online shopping and delivery of things to their homes after this COVID-19. I'm telling you, it is important that whatever job you're doing, you take a very serious assessment as you are in this Easter um, Mm -hmm. period Mm -hmm. and even Mm -hmm. as you are in the extended holiday that we're all in because of COVID-19. It is important that you think about the the job you're doing right now. Think about the job you're doing right now. Think about how this whole thing is going to, is going to affect that job. You understand? Um, it, a lot of people, a lot of places will not need to have the amount of staff that they have right now because companies that in the past, uh, you try to introduce them to online um, platforms, they never wanted to do that, okay? Mm-hmm. But now, right now, I'm telling you, mm-hmm. everybody is going online. People are using facilities like go to meeting. <laughs> I was laughing the other day uh, when I was president of my association. I used to, I used to um, tell them, come on, let's have online meeting. Let's do a teleconference. And some people will attack you and say, come, no, 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 we must meet. We must meet and we must drink beer. We must drink this, we must cook food. I say, look, we have so many meetings that we go to on the weekend. I have to go, I have my my my, um, my village meeting, I have my local government meeting, I have my state meeting, I have my, <laughs> my national meeting, and I have meeting of old boys, and I have church meeting, and everybody wants to attack your weekend. And nobody, people rarely, only, I think it's the Nigerian Canadian Association here and then, that used to have their, their own like bi-monthly. Every other person was, you know, um, uh, every month, you know, no, uh, they used to have their own quarterly. So that, that, will, that would be like, I think every two months or three months, please forgive me, yeah, bi-monthly after every two months. But the other people had theirs monthly. So, in a week, you have four four uh, four weekends. In a month, in a month, you have four weekends. So before you know it, every weekend you are in one meeting or the other. Now mm-hmm. I saw them begging for us to <laughs> register and come on a on a platform, and I just smiled. I said, "Okay, thank God, at least we are moving forward." So churches that were Attacking TV evangelists. You see, that's why you gotta be careful what you say about people. I remember a lot of churches will say, all TV evangelists are thieves, all TV evangelists are this, 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 this. It was a cliche, you know. Every pastor said that. Oh, I'm not a TV evangelist, or oh, they do this, this. Now I saw so many pastors scrambling, they were accusing those of us on YouTube channel as demonic, as wasting our time. Now you see pastors struggling to get a YouTube channel, asking you, learning how to do YouTube, learning how to do live. <laughs> those people that were, it was like in those days when if you were a deeper life member, you accuse people of using television. You don't listen to radio because, you know, it, it is satanic and demonic. And uh, I used to ask even all our brothers and sisters who go to Aladura Church, please, I beg I don't mean any offense, but those of you who insist that you must walk around bare, barefoot, call me and I in winter and walk around barefoot. Let us see you. 
<laughs> Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is that things are going to change drastically. Everybody is doing online banking. So a lot of bank staff are going to be laid off. So you better use this time. Take online courses. There are quick crashes you can do online. There are so many people advertising online business. A lot of them are fake. So you have to be very careful. But I encourage you, also look into it. Look into signing up. Free trial of uh, online um business there are businesses that all they do they send you things to review and when you review them you make a little money on the site it's little it's not much i just like this uh youtube channel that we have mm -hmm. some people think we make a lot of money no 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 it's just something on the side that you do and the money that comes out of it it's actually not a lot of money before you can make a lot of money you have to have videos that are hundred thousand two hundred thousand three hundred thousand so that's why you people if you want us to make money out of this video you have to send it out to people so that youtube can put adverts on it anyways what am i saying diversify yourself you must get a youtube channel you must have a facebook page stop saying that social media is a waste of time everything can be a waste of time if you want it to be even the car that you're driving you can decide instead of going home after work if you go and you you drive the car to to another place and you start driving mm -hmm. around town and you don't go home then you're wasting your time so you see how the car that is important can still be uh, an object of distraction the same way that your social media platform you can use it to do something that actually earns money for you okay so don't don't um, overlook that fact and then if there are skills mm -hmm. that you need to pick up if there are hobbies this is not a time when you just have a hobby that you waste time on. It doesn't make anything for you. You have to convert your hobby into a money-making venture. What are you good at? Are you good at staying online and then writing two, three, five pages in a WhatsApp group to accuse people, to tell them what, if they tell you something about your village people, you go and write a long three-page history to show the person how they are correct, how they are wrong. Why not take that skill that you have and write things about your people, about your history, and then put it out, turn it into a book, and you'll be selling on Amazon. The good thing about a book is that once you've done it and put it there, you don't go back to it. It just keeps selling itself. I'm telling you, anything that you, you have a good voice, then do a song, do a song about something that is important. Go and look at a trending thing. If you think about anything trending, you can sell it on iTunes. I'm telling you the truth. The world is full of the, Once you are solving a problem, go and do a video and show mm -hmm. people how to write a book on how to cook. There are so many things. You can take pictures, pictures of things that exist only in your area. Get your DSR camera. You don't need a very fantastic camera. Take a picture. If you live in a place where there is something of importance, take a picture of that thing and you can sell it online. There are, you don't know, there are sites that you can sell pictures, just sell pictures. You can sell a picture of, um, of uh, anything, anything that is, maybe it's a traditional thing, a traditional bracelet that you got from your village. You know, it's only um, associated with your people. Take a picture of it, name it, and then upload it in that website. Register with a website where you can sell pictures. And it becomes copyrighted to you. That picture will not be there online. So if you just take pictures and post, take pictures and post all the time. You know how to do hair tie. You tie it, you post it online. Cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. You make fun out of it. I'm telling you, register with a, a, a company that sells pictures online. Anytime you tie that your hair tie, take a picture of it, send it up there. Label it. Have a have a have your own page on that place, and you'll be making money. It's called passive income. I'm telling you, it's called passive income. Make some noises. Do you know? You don't know. You can make some noise. Somebody coughing. <coughs> <coughs> Record it with your phone, and it will be saved as coughing noise. And you sell it. Sell. Uh, uh, make a noise of somebody mm -hmm. yawning. Mm -hmm. <sighs> you just label it African yawn. <laughs> Audio file. They buy it from you. You didn't know that. Oh my.
my God. Take, uh, make a picture, a set of pictures of funny faces. Surprise, you know? All the emojis. Make a picture of somebody crying. <laughs> Put tears coming coming down. You can build a fire there. This thing I'm telling you is not a joke. Oh. People make money out of it. And these are where the world is going. The world is going where everybody is online. And even if there are existing pictures, you need to make your own... As I'm talking to you, I'm also talking to myself because that is the only way to survive with where we're going. It's going to take companies a lot of time to readjust to this whole pandemic. Go and read history of people who went through this in the past. It took them some time for everything to come back to normal. And why this is happening, it is people, you and me, who did not waste this period just wondering what to do when there's so much to do. We are the ones who benefit um, when we come out of this. I know we will come out of this either, either which way we'll come out of it. I know people will die. Uh, some people will not make it, but it is my prayer that we will make it. And if we make it, and um, then we will life has to continue. And let me, I'm not trying to scare you, but let me tell you that if we don't make it, if it is God's wish that we don't make it, because it doesn't mean that everybody that doesn't make it is a bad person. Sometimes God chooses for us to go. And if we should go, we need to be prepared. I'm telling you, this is not, um, I'm not kidding you. Uh, and I'm, I will only tell you the truth that I know. The truth is that if you're not living right, um, then you're not ready to live and you should be concerned about what happens to you if you should die now, if God should call you. So it is important. However you want to do it, uh, I'm a Christian. I will always recommend you uh, thinking seriously about what happens to you when you, li when you die. I, I'm a Christian. That means... I'm a Christ believer. I'm a believer in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So I will always tell people that if you've not made peace with, with Christ, who died on the cross for you, who sacrificed, it was, it was a young man, 30 years when, when he went and sacrificed for me and you. So if you have not accepted him, if you've not, if you don't have a relationship with him, you better do that. I'm telling you. All these things we talk about pastors, about people living wrong. It is what it is. People live wrong. People misrepresent the gospel. But the truth is that the gospel is real. It is real for me. I believe in it. I'm born again. I, I live as if I'm going to die tomorrow. And you must live like that. If you don't live like that, I, I don't know what I can tell you. You see, this is the way that I practice my own ministry. This is where I spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I live fast. I live like nobody promised me tomorrow. I don't live like I know that I'll be there tomorrow, next week. No, 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 no. I do whatever I can do right now. Whatever information I have, I give it. Whatever help I can give, I give mm -hmm. to people. Whatever I know, I let it out because when I want, when I die, I want to die very empty, completely finished, exhausted, milk squeezed, and I'll go home and go and be with my creator that's the way to live life and so guys i hope you've picked something from our our interaction today once again from all of us here in the worship media uh this one i won't tell you where this is but if you're smart you know where you see something like this <laughs> so that is where we're reaching you today and wishing you on behalf of my whole family um erica uh Kenne, Ijoma, we all wish you guys a happy Easter. We love you. Take care of yourself and remain safe. Mwah.